Okay. Uh, what's up, everybody? Justin McCauley here alongside Ryan James, Jordan Dover. Sorry, everybody, for some technical difficulties, but we shifted from what we were doing. Now we, you know, worked on Zoom, so this is pre-recorded. Um, and but we're still going to get an awesome conversation, and we encourage everyone to comment below. Uh, and if you have any questions, Ryan and Jordan, they've been they're awesome on social media, and they'll jump in and answer the questions. So. Uh, First things first, it's got to be good to see you. Know, it's got to be good to see each other. Uh, so, how are you guys doing? I'd like to start off by answering no. It's not good to see Jordan. <laughs> um, ready, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, every everything's good here on the on the west end of Toronto. Um, family's good, can't complain. So, um, that's all you can ask for. Yes. Yeah, what about you, Jordan? Um. It's nice to be home. It's nice to be with the family. I think that's the main thing right now. Um, just grateful to be at home and away from Ryan for a little bit. Um, so I think that's the main thing I'm grateful for. <laughs> so you guys, uh, you guys, so for people who don't know, you guys are roommates. Uh, this is your second year with roommates as roommates together. Were you guys roommates last year as well? Um, no. <laughs> Kind of. He was over. He was over a lot, so it felt like we were roommates. But technically, we weren't roommates last year. Were you roommates back in when you guys played together in Rochester as well? Same deal. We mm -hmm. weren't. But he was over all the time. So this is our first time being actual roommates. So yeah. uh, you'd be able to you know, let him know if that hairstyle is any good or not. Oh, we all know. The people can <laughs> see it. <laughs> the people can see what's going on over there. Wait, they can see it? That's crazy. <laughs> Now, I'd like to say that I didn't go over just to hang out with Jordan. Um, I was just, I couldn't get my Wi-Fi set up, so I just needed a place to use some Wi-Fi. Um, so I just go over there to use Wi-Fi. Um, we I'm didn't even talk, like, so. And I'm like, decide if I should just I don't want people you lie, if I should let you lie, or if I should just let it slide, you know what I'm saying? Let people form their own judgments. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you know it's been a crazy time i'm assuming you guys both saw uh the news that came out a couple hours ago um with the extension of the quarantine so how have you guys been keeping you know keeping in shape and uh really you know passing your time uh and getting your touches in during quarantine um we've been one thing that's been really cool like we're on zoom right now and what we've been doing as a team we've been on about three times a week um doing team zoom calls um, getting our work in for about an hour on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So that's one thing that's kept us sharp. We've also done some ball work involved with that as well. Um, so that's one way that we've been staying in shape, just trying to wait this out and make sure that we're ready to go when the time comes. Yeah, same same here. It's, it's kind of tough to get a little bit of the ball work on your own. Um, but sometimes you do a little bit of ball work. I'm still running on the side, you know, find a little – little small streets around my, my area to run around. Um, but every once in a while, I'll just getting outside, going on walks with my family. Um, but it's also nice to, I'm not usually home at this time. So with all this free time, I'm, I'm using it to, to basically bond with my family at times. I'm never home in April. So um, mm -hmm. it's nice to be home at this time. Yeah, right. And you just celebrated a birthday uh, about a week ago. Um, so happy yes. Birthday. So that's got to be nice to be home to, while you're celebrating your birthday. Yes, it was. I got a lot of birthday punches. It's crazy. When was your birthday? Don't act like you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Those who don't know, it was April twenty first. So just a couple, just a couple days ago. Uh, and uh, I don't know. You had a fancy cake in your fridge on one of your Instagram stories. Was that for you? Yeah, that was not for me. Um, <laughs> my sister. <laughs> My sister is actually a very, very, very uh, talented cake decorator. Um, and she doesn't make cakes for me. One, I don't really ask for it, but two, it's just kind of like, I feel like it takes so much time to do those cakes that unless I like ask her to do one, she's like, it's not, it's not worth all the time to just make a cake when she knows I'll eat anything. <laughs> so if I specifically ask for one, she might make it, but that cake was not for me, unfortunately. That'd be so hard to have in the fridge. I would probably eat that now. I'd have no self-control. Honestly, I'm telling you that if you saw all the cakes that she used to make, it's crazy. They're all crazy designs, all cool designs. 
Mm. Sometimes you have to, it's so hard to resist, so hard. So you mentioned that you guys are home. So for those who aren't aware, you guys are both from, you're both from Canada, right near each other uh, in Toronto, in the, the Ontario. So uh, is that where Jordan, I know Ryan's out, uh, back home. Jordan, are you back in Canada as well? I am. I'm in Ajax, Ontario, the east end of Toronto, the nice side of town. Um, Ryan, I don't know if Ryan's willing to share this with you, but he's kind of from a rough, a rough side of town. He didn't ask about me. Just talk about yourself, please. Okay. Um, so I'm in Ajax right now. Um, it's about an hour away from Mississauga. So we don't see each other at all when we're home, but we're kind of close. So. Mm. So it's tough to say we're from the same area. <laughs> I don't really want to be associated with it, but yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Well, you know, it's like saying uh, you're from, you know, Pittsburgh and you live an hour away or something. Exactly. It, you know, exactly. it's, that, it's that generalness of you're from New York City and you live across the river in Jersey. Precisely. Yeah. But what's it like being home, what's it like being home Jordan, uh, in Canada during this time? It's nice. I mean, my sister had a baby in January, so I get to kind of see him grow up um, versus where I would have been in Pittsburgh at this time. Um, I wouldn't have seen my nephew for a long time. So it's nice to kind of be around the house like, wow, he's still super young to get to play with him and see him grow up. So it's really nice to be home. So, uh one congrats to your sister on having a child and and uh so you guys you know you, let's go back to you guys you know got to play with each other at, at rochester rhinos that was uh with a bunch of the the guys uh, as well so you know take us back to you know to rochester what was you guys obviously kind of knew each other uh, correct from when you guys were growing up um mm -hmm. what was it like when you guys finally got to you know play together considering you guys both play similar positions um, well, when I first showed up, this was Ryan's second year with the team, but this is my first year with the team. So when I showed up, um, I kind of gravitated towards him because it was a familiar face. Um, we played against each other growing up. So I kind of went to him to be around someone that was from the same area, like you have things in common with. So um, I became close with him from the beginning and he was close with guys on the team from the year before. So I kind of jumped into their friend group. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how things came to be in Rochester. RJ, what about you, uh, you know, having somebody uh, come in, you know, from close, you know, back home, uh, you know, what was your first impression of Jordan? Um, what? Well, this was the year we were, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> this is the year we, uh, we started off our preseason in a, in a hotel setting. So, I didn't really know at first when he was going to show up, but I, I saw him as a familiar face and he just looked like he was struggling. He was carrying a suitcase in, he was coming in and you know me, I put him under the wing. I brought him in, introduced him to some people, took care of him. Um, he's Canadian. So I said, I can't let this guy struggle like this. Um, and ever since, I don't know, he's, he's done well for himself. And here he is. He does. He doesn't need my support anymore. Big man now. So, I did what I could for him, and we're still friends. So, <laughs> with you, so I, that is a question that I want to. You guys both went to college here in the United States, and you know, being from Canada and being around the league, you know, you know, we brought in another the the Hounds brought in another Canadian in Skylar Thomas this year, uh, who's ironically from the Toronto area as well. Uh, is is that is there a sense of camaraderie when you see a you know fellow Canadian in the league or? Uh, or you play with, whether it was in college or in, in pros? Yeah, of course. I mean, Skyler's a year older than us, so we didn't play against him. But me and Skyler actually played for the same um, club growing up. We both played for Ajax. He just played for the Ajax Gunners. I played for the Strikers. Um, so we were – I knew Skyler from a long time ago growing up. We both played on our teams for from since we were very young. So – and we would see him around the league. He used to play for Charleston, so we played against them there as well. Um, but anytime, like, you see Canadians or people from the area that you're from back home, there's just that special bond. I mean, even being able to talk to him, like how I would talk to someone from home, like, even using my Toronto slang with him is something that's nice. So it's nice to have him in the locker room, just adds a little bit more. All 
RJ, you got anything to add to that? Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's closer on Jordan's side. Um, so I never grew up playing with him, anything like that. And obviously you hear of, like when you're in school, you hear of different names and you see someone's Canadian. The first thing you do is you, maybe you look a little more into them. Um, and I've known, I've, uh, I didn't talk to him too much. Like when he was in Syracuse, um, but as soon as he came into the league, like I knew him from before, like I've heard his name in Canada once or twice. And as soon as he was on those USL teams, it's, it's one of those things Jordan's saying that even I may not have been that close with him when he was playing with Charleston, but I, I felt comfortable going up to him and saying hi. And it, it felt really easy to talk to him and have a good chat about after the game. You know, you're in a new city. You don't know anyone. Um, this guy's from the same neighborhood as me. So it's kind of cool to move from country, move from different state to state or something and see a familiar face um, or someone that might have something in common with you. Okay. So uh, we did get some questions. I put out um, question responses uh, for fans to ask questions, you know, leading up to our chat yesterday. And so I wanted to get into them. Um, the first question is from Judah Avery uh, for both of you. Who is your favorite team other than the Riverhounds? My favorite team um, personally is Arsenal. I've been a fan of them for a very long time. My favorite player used to be um, – Thierry Henry, he's one of the reasons that I fell in love with the sport. So I've been following, I've been following Arsenal for a very long time. Um, just hoping that they could find ways to do a little bit better in the future. <laughs> um, myself, personally, I'd, I think I'd have to say um, Manchester. My, my dad uh, always grew up following United. Um, and I guess I, I fell in love with... Uh, I guess that's how I play too still um, with Rooney's hustle. He's, he's just up and down and he's willing to do anything for his team. Um, and my dad really, really gravitated towards watching United play. So I, I watched him play and even you see him come to the MLS. It's very cool. And I, I wish I would have got a chance to play with him, but um, yeah, Man United has always been a cool experience and cool team to watch for me. Yeah, and if, for anyone who follows either of these guys on social media, which you should, um, first off, but they they went to you guys went to Europe over during the off season. I uh, went on a trip. So what was tell us about that experience? And I know you got to go see some you know high level of, you know, soccer over there in Europe. Um, it was it was a great experience. I mean, any chance that you get to see different parts of the world is always something that I would encourage others to do. Um, so it was great to be to Europe. That was my first time being over there. Um, saw a few different countries, and we were lucky enough to see Chelsea play. We had, we got to see them play two games. Um, yeah. Mark Pulisic, who used to coach with the Riverhounds, his son Christian Pulisic plays for Chelsea right now, and Mark found a way to get us tickets for a couple of games. So it was really, it was really nice to actually be there and experience that the level that they play at is something amazing, something we aspire to get to. So it was nice to see it live. Yeah, it was, it's, it's cool to see, I mean, outside of the soccer too, it's just a cool to see a different, different culture, how people walk around the streets, how people interact with each other. Um, it's not always the same here in North America. And I can, I could probably say that the culture in North America is very similar. So Canada and the U S culture are, are kind of similar, even though there's different governments and stuff like that, we still kind of act um, in a similar manner. Um, so going over to Europe, you see a little bit different different things. Um, and I think it was, we were lucky enough to have one or two people guide us around. So we had friends from Rochester um, showing us around in, in Germany and, and France. So it was, it was nice in that sense um, to have. Um, and we also went to uh, the Emirates Stadium so yeah, I'm sure that was cool for Jordan to see. I did forget about that. We didn't see a game at Arsenal, but we got to see the actual stadium, and it is huge. It was it was a good experience. Massive. Well, got some stuff from the gift store, um, so that was nice as well. Yeah, you'll be a little Jiff fan now. Yeah, for real. I got my flag upstairs, waiting to hang it in my room. <laughs> <laughs> so another question we got from Jocelyn Graf: Which one of you guys is the better dancer? Brian. <laughs> this guy said it like you have to buzz in. This guy said it. Yep. Um, and I'm sure 
I'm sure uh, Mr. Graf would agree um, with that one. Yeah. <laughs> No, Ryan, Ryan can have that one. He's more he's more of a dancer than me. Like, um, whenever we go out, he's always trying to get people to show their favorite dance moves. So he likes he likes to dance. <laughs> if, I had, if I if I had to dance, obviously I'd be better than him. You know what I'm saying? But like, <laughs> the question should have been who likes dancing more. Is it Ryan? Uh, okay, this uh, one's from El Paso uh, El Pass official. Oh, uh, they want to just say that hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. And uh, so shout out to them. Uh, shout out to them. Same to you. Yeah, very kind. Very kind. Mm -hmm. All right. This one's from uh, Tal Elizabeth. <laughs> and uh, for this one's for Ryan. So what is the most annoying thing Jordan does on the field? On the field? Yes. Um, he says, Ryan, I think you should hold back. It's my turn to go up. Um, <laughs> no, I think, um, I don't think there's anything that, that annoys me too much just because I think we have similar personalities as well. Just if there's a mistake made and there's something I'm like, uh, why did he do that? At least he, he hustles really hard to make up for that mistake. Um, and we all have mistakes. It's just how you react to those mistakes. And I think he does that well. So there's nothing that I can find that that's too annoying. Um, yeah, I can't, at least right now, I can't think of it. So with you two being, uh, you know, such good friends and playing similar positions, how does that, how does your friendship translate over to, you know, the field of play when you guys kind of have to work like on a string or do, does your friendship and how close you guys off the field translate on the field? Um, I mean, I think we have good chemistry on and off the field. Um, and I kind of know his tendencies and he knows mine as well. Um, playing on opposite sides of the field, we kind of have to play off of each other. Um, so there has to be that type of balance to our game. Um, but I know he likes to get forward. So if I see that he's trying to get forward, I'm not going to go as high. Um, when I go high, he's not supposed to go forward as well. Um, but he doesn't care. <laughs> he does what he wants at times. But um, yeah, and also like, living together, being off the field, like we're comfortable enough to talk to each other about the game as well. Like if there's things we see going on, things we think we could do better, um, we could talk about that off the field as well. So I think that's a good thing to have off the field too. Yeah, I think that's one of the most important things is he, he could say something if I'm having a bad game and saying, like, honestly, you were trying to dribble too much. And like, I think you just try to go up too much. Like you just need to relax, make a couple passes, and just like not go up so much showing that is some I might take that in a bad way from some other people or maybe I'm hot headed and take it in the wrong way. But when Jordan says it, I'm just like, all right, like he's only going to say it if it's true. He's not there to like bring me down, you know, and that's to say for like most of the team. But a lot of people on the team aren't comfortable saying things like that yet. I mean, the season just started. So I'm hoping that's that's what we all get to. We all feel comfortable taking that that kind of criticism to grow as a team. And that's how we're going to win a championship. And you saw, you know, you saw Jordan, when you went up, uh, I think you talked about how, how Ryan likes to push and you saw a payoff last, uh, in the playoff game last year, when you went wing back, to, you went, you know, winger to winger. Um, that had to be a cool moment for you guys to, did you know Ryan was going to, did you guys know each other were going to be on the backside of that? Um, I, I don't know if he saw me or not, but, um, I saw him making his run and I didn't know how he got so wide open. Um, and we were dominating that game as well. So I thought that it was a good opportunity to get forward. Um, we had them push back into their half. Um, so yeah, I kind of just gambled. I saw the back post was open and he played a, a lovely cross. Yeah, I could, I could definitely see it was, it's weird. It's, it's like a big shape of a circle sprinting down the field. I could just see his big head running. So um, you can't miss it. You can't miss it. Um, and I hit it back post where he was just waiting for it. <laughs> That's actually rude. That's actually rude. <laughs> well, for me, that was one of the goals that stood out because the the way the pass happened, you guys were both kind of crossing. And then you scored, and you just kind of met behind the net right in front of the steel army. So visually, I was like, oh, well, there you go. They yeah. crossed, scored, and then made it at the, the beginning. Uh, at least, yeah. you know, Jordan finished his cross. RJ – did not finish. I know Jordan early. I know. <laughs> All of us are meant to score goals. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
Some people are born with it. Some people just don't have it. Um, he makes good old clap. <laughs> he has really good throw-ins. Um, he has some. Um, he has some. Um, he has some other good qualities that are great for the team. So we have other players that can uh, so it's not really what we need from him. Patience. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> patience. Patience is a virtue. So I'm just waiting for my moment. Big season coming up. <laughs> I'm just saying, just be re- be ready for when it happens, because <laughs> you're gonna want to be there. <laughs> uh, so, it was, so Tao gave us another question, and it was, "How did you both become friends? How did you two become friends?" Yeah, just kind of spoke to it already at the beginning. Like once I showed up to to Pittsburgh, not Pittsburgh, to Rochester. And it was a weird one as well because I disliked him like growing up and playing soccer against him Um, because he was a good player. So you often don't like the good players on the other team because they hurt your team. Um, But yeah, it was just that sense of familiarity when I got to Rochester to see that familiar face, um, to make those connections that we had from home and then to mesh with his friend group. That's, I think that's kind of how we became friends. Yeah, I'd I'd say probably even off the field too, like we just, I think we're a little bit similar. Like there's certain things that we we don't mind doing and certain things that we, we like doing certain things that we don't like, we don't like doing. Um, So we found, we found uh, commonalities and it was just, yo, you want to go to the movies at five? And yeah, cool. Yo, I'm going to go back. I'm not going to, I'm not probably not going to talk to you till six. Yeah. I was hoping you weren't going to talk to me till six (laughs) or like, it's it's different things like that. Like we 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 don't mind eating certain things after a, a practice, you know. And it's it's those little things where you're not always talking, but you're doing them together, and you kind of bond without without words. And I think we just we have similar uh, things in common off the field as well as on. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and it's a friendship that you know the fans get to see blossom down in the south side. So Jonah uh, Fonzo says, if you could pick anyone in the world to be their, your third roommate, who would you guys pick? It's a trap question. I'd like to say Joanna. <laughs> <laughs> if she's watching this, I got it right. <laughs> I, I was talking to her today. And she said she was going to ask that question, too. <laughs> um, she's going to get mad at me if I, if I say anything other than her. So I think Joanna could be our, our third roommate. Okay. Yeah, good try, Joanna. <laughs> so from DS6, uh, what is your favorite moment with the Hound? I think my favorite moment with the Hounds was our was our playoff win against Birmingham last year. Um, so I mean, we had a huge crowd. It was at home. And we kind of let our fans down the year before that, playing at home, hosting a playoff game. So... I think it was huge for us to win at home in front of a big crowd. Um, it kind of gave that city that belief that I think the sport of the soccer needed in Pittsburgh. So I think that was that was my favorite moment as a home. Yeah, I don't know if I if I can say specifically. I think it I think it would take more time for me to to go through all all my memories. Um, but I'd I think I'd right off the bat like the first one that comes to mind is probably that last game. Um, against Birmingham just it just felt like everything is clicking everything was flowing everyone was happy you could hear everyone cheering um, it just I guess the best word is just everything was clicking and when it happens it's it's fun for everyone you go in the locker room Bob's having fun I'm having fun Jordan's having fun um, and the fans are loving it and that's what that's what you're here for you're here to give the, the fans what they paid for um, and you're here to give the city what what they deserve, and that's a championship. And so, we're here to we're here to try to do that this season. Yeah, that game was a uh, super wet. That's what I remember from that game. Uh, rain was coming down, but I so I put this out on social for you guys watching uh, on Instagram last night. Uh, you know, this Tuesday was National Superhero Day, so uh, I wanted to get the guys' opinions on who their top superhero. Uh, were so we're gonna start with Jordan. Uh, his top five superheroes. So I'm gonna go through the list, then you can uh, tell me 
and explain, you know, why you picked these fives. Uh, we'll count down. Number five was Magneto. Uh, four was Spider-Man. Three was Captain Marvel. Two is Black Panther. And one is Thor. So uh, defend your list, Jordan. Um, that's no problem. Um, Thor, obviously, God of, God of Thunder. Um, what more do you need? Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, of course. Um, who was third? Captain Marvel? Yes. Captain, Captain Marvel. Um, I like Captain Marvel because she comes and deals with things when, like, no one else could deal with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, even in the last Avengers movie, you saw that she showed up and she probably could have defeated Thanos by herself. Um, but, yeah, she comes and deals with things when, when things get rough. Um, Spider-Man. Spider-Man's just cool to me. Everything about Spider-Man is just cool to me. Um, <laughs> Uh, that's my that's me defending Spider Man. <laughs> um, and Magneto from watching the X Men films, I was always fascinated with um, how he would use his powers. I don't think he had like the most interesting power out of everyone, but the way he used it, I think, um, spoke to how powerful he was. Like not only as a person, but he wasn't always a hero. But I consider him a hero. Okay. All right. So Ryan, your turn. Uh, we'll go. We'll go five to one, um, RJ, and then you can defend your list. So five is okay. Rogue. At number four was Doctor Strange. Three is Beast Boy. Two is Frozone, and number one is Spider Man. And I, I have to admit, there's at least two of the uh, Frozone and Rogue. I had to look up. So I was like, okay, um, that might be more against me on a. That's how I do still. That's how yeah. I do. <laughs> that might be me. lack of knowledge. But uh, uh, RJ, I guess, defends your list of five and why they're your, on your list. Okay. Um, so Spider-Man as well. I don't have a lot to say about him. I just think everything he does is also cool. Telling you, He's bro. He's a cool guy. <laughs> you. Like, there's sometimes I'm walking around and I see a spider and I'm like, should I just let him bite me? Yeah. And then I'm like, mm, not today. Maybe another day. But I would love to be Spider-Man. That would be dope. Telling you. Uh, <laughs> Frozone, um, I think all anyone that has ice coming out their veins is extremely so fascinating. Um, I wanted to choose Sub Zero, but my sister said that's not a superhero, so I didn't put him on the list. But like Frozone, like when you can just put ice out and just skate wherever you want to go, um, I love that. And Sub Zero was my guy where I just do the, the backwards one. You just fall backwards in the ice three or four <laughs> times and just piss off. <laughs> I'm not kind of player from <laughs> where you just <laughs> if you play Mortal Kombat, you know what I'm talking about, and that's mm -hmm. an annoying move, and that's the type of guy I am when I play Mortal Kombat. <laughs> um Beast Boy, um just a childhood from Teen Titans, um just childhood um fascination. He could change into any animal. It's just really cool. I was just cool with you could one day be a rhino and then the next day now you're just a river hound. <laughs> Even though I don't really know what that is but like you could just change from anything you wanted to and i just thought that was really cool you could just be anything you wanted this guy's um, beast boy <laughs> beast boy is sick trust yes. um wolverine uh i had on there because i just find that he's relentless like you could put him through so much and he'll just stand back up and be like i'm still here like it's gonna be a lot to take out wolverine you didn't even um, have Wolverine on your list, huh? He Do wasn't? No, it was Doctor Strange and then Rogue. I had a lot of people that I didn't put on the list that I wanted to be on the list. But I'm, I'm going to talk about those too. <laughs> <laughs> um, how, could you, how could you put it to five? I don't know. That's dirty. Um, Doctor Strange, um, I just find magic really cool. I wish I was good at magic. Mm -hmm. um, so he's, he's really cool. I think everyone's amused by magic and I wish I was good at magic so I wish I was Doctor Strange as well. Mm -hmm. um, who was my last one? Rogue. Rogue. Um, do you know what Rogue's powers are? I don't. So Is she it... can just... No, you try, you try to guess. She touches people and they start dying. Is that true or not? Yeah, she can like suck the superpower out of your arm. So you're telling me whoever Jordan is, I can just take his superpower and just be like, you're not super anymore. That's, That's... crazy to me. Yeah. That's got to be one of the danger most dangerous ones. She's got to wear gloves because she doesn't trust herself. That's crazy. That's fair. Is she a superhero? Uh, 
apparently, um, she used to be like, I think she's, she's part of the X-Men, but there was like a stint in there where she wasn't a part of the X-Men and she was kind of, kind of bad, but she, mm -hmm. she fell on the good side. She was a superhero. Okay. Um, but one that I didn't mention was, was Flash. I'm going to only say Flash because I'm pretty fast as well. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad because I was like, yeah, that's a good one. You know? <laughs> I just knew that one would make Jordan upset, so I had to That's why I'm upset. <laughs> <laughs> you both had Spider-Man on your list, which, and there's been like a hundred different versions of Spider-Man. Which Spider-Man movie character uh, did you like the most? Um, I like the new Spider-Man. Um, Tom Holland, is it? Who plays yeah. Spider-Man now? I like I like him as Spider-Man, and I think like even like with his suit, the new suit that he got from Tony Stark and all of that, with all the technological advancements and everything, I think his new suits are super cool. So I think that's my favorite version, just because it's so up to date, you know. Um, I'd say real life, yeah, probably that one. Um, I did like Into the Spider-Verse, though. Um, Very good movie. But as far as movies goes, that that was probably one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. okay um yeah i had to deliver to five or else we'd be here we could talk two hours just on the 100 percent <laughs> uh, oh, last superhero related question dc or marvel uh which one do you prefer oh you could tell from my list <laughs> i don't think i have, i don't think i had one dc person on my list i don't think you did either because yeah. you're selfish I was thinking, I was trying to be inclusive. I'm like, who can I put from me? <laughs> and it just wasn't happening. I just don't like DC like that. Um, I'm not sure I have a, a preference, really. I've never, like, fell to just one side. I mean, I think I like more, if, if we're talking about movies, I like the Marvel movies better. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of superheroes, I don't, I don't know if I classify, like, I'll split up my superheroes like that. It's just either I think your superpower is sick, <laughs> or like you're just you're just a next man. I don't know. She's the next man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just... Um. So we'll wrap up here. Uh. Final. Uh. You know. I just want to thank you guys for joining me. And uh, sorry for all the technical difficulties. Sorry everyone out there. Um. Uh, once again, you know, we'd love to hear your comments. And if you have any questions, or you know, you want to tell us what your favorite superhero is, or what superhero reminds. Uh you of you know and, and rj uh, let us know in the comments below for sure but um is you know jordan last word anything you want anybody want to shout out or anything you want to you know get out there to the people um shout out to ryan james everybody go follow him on instagram at... <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know what your instagram is um, at junior lee james Yo, this guy Expo, knows it. Expo <laughs> <laughs> underscore nine. <laughs> too far, too far. <laughs> um, I just, I just like to say, uh, say hey to all the the Steel Army guys. Um, if anyone's watching this, um, when we come back, we're gonna come back strong and we're gonna play hard for you guys. Um, and also, I'd like to also say, um, if anyone really wants to see what's under that hat of Jordan, just comment below. Um, because I don't know what's under it either, and I think he's hiding something. I'll tell you guys right now. It's a problem. I'll it's tell you problem. right now, don't bother um, typing out the problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> the hat is not coming off until 2021. Um, so, you. But make sure everyone's staying safe. Everybody stay safe. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you guys. You know, uh, once again, you know, thanks again. This live stream is brought to you in part by Epic Brokers. Create an epic partnership while supporting your business insurance needs. Epic delivers global risk management and employee benefits capabilities. Visit them at www.epicbrokers.com. So thanks for, to Epic for sponsoring this Hounds Chat. Thank you guys again. Uh, for joining us and thank you as you guys mentioned thank you to all the nurses and doctors and all the essential workers who are putting their lives uh, at risk every single day uh, to keep us safe we'll be back soon uh, and reminder to catch Tony Walls as a former member of the Rochester Rhinos with these guys and Tony big tone <laughs> he'll be on Instagram live this Friday uh, at 2 p.m. Eastern time uh, I believe he's back in we got to make that uh 
dis, you know, distinction because he's now back in central time zone, uh, back in his hometown. So catch him at 2 p.m. Uh, tomorrow on our Instagram page. He'll be answering all your questions, and he might even have some insight on these guys. So thank you guys again for joining us. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, and we will see you again next week. See you guys. All right. Perfect. See you. Oh, that's